The Overstorm Brave is arguably the meta blitz in Madden 23. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys a new setup that makes this play even better. No! It'll get even faster pressure right up the middle. <laughs> and shut down any run play inside or out. And forces tons of takeaways. If you want to see what setup I'm using to get results like this, stick around after the intro. The For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable mutt coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. In today's video, I am once again using my latest defensive evil, the Denver Broncos. This is definitely my favorite defense right now, and is probably the best defense in the game that no one is talking about. On offense, I'll be using my Saints offensive ebook once again, and I'm going to be showing you guys a sneak preview of a brand new one-play touchdown on my gun stack wide flex offense, so stick around for that. If you guys want to see more from either of these offenses or defenses, as always, please be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to ring that notification bell. But if you don't want to wait and you want to see more from these or any of my ebooks right now, all you have to do is click the links in the description or the top pinned comment, and they will download download instantly to your phone or laptop or you can have it sent to the email of your choice. In today's game plan I'm going to be using a brand new team because even though I am an Eagles fan they are so dominant in real life and this game that it's getting kind of boring and I really want a new challenge. I like to use teams that I enjoy watching in real life and the Seattle Seahawks are a great story. They went from a team that was expected to be a joke this season to an actual contender with Geno Smith resurrecting his career and getting enough of a ratings boost to make this a pretty good team in Madden as well. Taking a look at their roster I'm pretty used to using average quarterbacks in Madden but Geno actually has a strong stronger arm with a 88 throw power rating compared to Jalen Hurts who only has an 86 and that was pretty much my biggest issue when it came to Jalen Hurts. They have a lot of exciting rookies and tons of speed with Kenneth Walker who is one of the fastest running backs in the game at a 94 speed. The receiving core is also fast with DK Metcalf at 95, Tyler Lockett at 93, Marcus Goodwin at 96 and Noah Fant at 89 speed at tight end. Even their fullback is an 88 speed. The offensive line to defense is a different story though as they really only have a few decent linebackers Jamal Adams and another stud rookie in Tariq Woolen who is six foot four with 98 speed, but he is still raw and I never use his team, so let's see how it goes. If you guys want to see me use more of your favorite teams, give me some suggestions in the comment section and maybe I'll use them in a future video. I started this game on offense and I'll be using my gun stack wide flex offense once again. I have put out several videos about this offense and I have links in the description if you guys want to check that out, as I think it's one of the best offenses in the game. The first drive didn't start off too good as I'm a little hesitant to throw the ball with a new quarterback since I don't really know what to expect with Geno and I take a sack. On 3rd and 14, I see why, as the pressure forces a bad throw and I get intercepted on the sideline, giving him great field position. On defense, most people run the Overstorm Brave from the nickel 2-4, and the setup I'm going to show you still works if you use that defense, but I'm also going to be using this from a different defense entirely, the Dime 2-3, which is a rare formation that I made a video about last week that allows you to put a cornerback at one of these linebacker positions, giving you even more speed for blitzing and coverage. I will be using that defense called the Silver Pinch Shoot later in the video, and I'll also have a link in the description for that if you guys missed that video as well as an on-screen pop-up at the end so stick around for that most people when they run this play pinch the defense then bring the user safety over the center so it can get the defensive ends off the edge but this setup is susceptible to outside runs and it also has been patched recently so the tackles pick up the previously looping ends that would get the pressure making it much less effective my setup is very different as i'm going to pinch the defensive line which is d-pad to the left and down then spread the linebackers which is d-pad to the right and up giving you a look that looks like this i will continue to bring the safety down or whoever is assigned to cover the running back and hover the gap pre-snap before dropping into coverage just like the previous setup. If you're not very fast in making defensive adjustments this is really the only steps required but there are additional steps that can improve the blitz, run defense, and pass coverage that was shown throughout the video. On the first play I cheat out of the gap a bit as I'm expecting the running back to run a flat route and I wanted to get a head start. Doing this cost me on the blitz though as my opponent is already in the max protect blocking seven with only three receivers running the route and the play still ends with a rusher right in Derek's car's face before he completes a short throw. To kick the blitz and the outside run defense up a notch, I like the QB contain as this will guarantee the ends get outside for better run defense, but they will also spread the line allowing big gaps for the linebackers to walk right through. On the next play, he motion snaps a receiver once again to give him seven blockers including the running back. And 
we get our first instant sack right up the middle. The Raiders do have one of the best receiving cores in the game though with Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, and Darren Waller and I have one of the worst secondaries as he picks up the first down on the very next play as he beats my safety on a corner route on second and 21. <laughs> Which brings me to my first adjustment as I usually put a cornerback at this safety spot for better coverage against routes like this but honestly they don't really have a lot of depth let alone starters for that matter so I put somebody named Coleman who? to hopefully shut that down. On the next play, I'm using him over the middle as the pressure forces a bad decision. Gotcha, bitch. And we come away with our first user lurk of the game when doubling Devontae Adams as we get a nice return to about midfield. This guy must watch my channels. On the next play, he's using the same silver pin shoe play that I put out last week. Link in the description. The blitzing quarterback comes right past everyone and he almost gets the sack, but I already had called my man-beating play the Salem pivot, which he also must know about as I barely get the ball over his user for a big catch and run with one of the fastest tight ends in the game. And I get into the red zone in just one play. I see he comes out in a small spread formation, so I switch over to the inside zone. He stays in it, so I motion in a tight end for an extra blocker and get down to the two before hitting it with my famous wheel route to punch it in. Back to the same defense, the pressure gets in so fast that he can't even complete a nine yard comeback route. Nope. As the pressure forces a bad throw. Then on second and 10, the pressure gets home. Another instant sack right up the middle from the exact same spot that forced the pressure on the previous play. And I'm lucky they did as Devontae Adams completely pooped on his man defender and was wide open. Oh, he almost had it. On third and 21, he tries to use the exact same bench play and setup he used to get the first down on second and 21 early in the game. But since I switched out the safety with the cornerback after that, gotcha, bitch. this time we were coming away with an interception. He starts using the mid blitz, which is another very good man zero blitz defense, but it's very weak right up the middle. There's no second level defender. So I switch over to the inside zone once again. On the next play, he is looking for that though oh. and meets me in the hole with the safety i expect to see him waiting there again so this time seeing him out of position i switch to the halfback wheel one more time and i'm wide open in space i make him miss with a user juke <laughs> kenneth walker is a stud up 14 nothing now his offensive game plan has changed to where's Devonte adams which is pretty much what he's going to be doing for the rest of the game i had put my coaching adjustments to match by death chart but for some reason tyreek woolen hasn't been covering Devonte adams at all so I call a timeout and start to play a game I like to call Where's Woolen, which is something that I'll be doing the rest of the game. Of course, my opponent only gives me 30 seconds to figure it out, so I put Tyreek Woolen at CB1 and then make sure that Adams is at wide receiver one. So in theory, this should be a matchup where he covers Devontae Adams all game. On the next play, though, he makes an adjustment, and now my wide receivers are not aligned. I wanted to man align, but that could make things worse. So I shoot over to that side to use the area, and he hands it off, Oops. leaving me way out of position. I switch on to the safety who was in perfect position to make the tackle but i should have just left it alone it was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up as i completely blow what would have been an easy tackle and let him take it to the house I get the ball back with a minute and 15 seconds left, but I can't do anything with it as I get sacked twice and get pushed all the way back to a fourth and 26. Damn! I have to punt it away from my own end zone. He gets a solid return to start at midfield. Then it turns right back into the Devontae Adams show as he connects on back-to-back -back passes going right down the field. And I can't help but notice that the defender trailing him each time once again with somebody other than Tariq Woolen. I go back to my coaching adjustments, but I can't figure out why Woolen isn't matching up. So I try changing it to route running to see if that works. And of course it doesn't as some dude named Bryant is trailing him yet again. Damn it! I have to wait for the second half to start so I can call a timeout again to play Where's Woolen. I'm thinking maybe Adams is in the slot receiver spot. So I put Woolen in the slot cornerback spot thinking maybe that will work. Doesn't matter though, it was on the first play. He breaks off a big run and gets inside a field goal range. On the next play, he tries to throw it to Adams again and guess who's in coverage. If you guess Woolen, you guess wrong. He would have had another big play too if Jamal Adams didn't come out of nowhere and knock it loose. That's right. That's right. On the next play, the run defense stands up this time, stopping him for no gain. On third and nine, he comes back for a catch to force a fourth and one. He tries to hurry me up, but I call a timeout. Timeout? If he wants that one yard, you got to earn it against my number one run defense, the 3 4 odd cut for quarters, which is my go to defense in critical short yard situations. I will have a link in the description for that video as well. As it looks like he audibles out of the run, nothing is open, and we get the shed. <laughs> forcing the incompletion and a turnover on downs. On first down, run the inside zone to see he is now using cover three. So I'm going to preview a new one play touchdown that I recently found from this formation and a play called the fade out. If you guys want to see a breakdown of some new one play touchdowns from this formation, please hit the like button and let me know in the comment section as I plan on making a breakdown about this tomorrow. Break yourself, fool! <laughs> 
as I get inside the red zone in one play. I get a little bit closer on the next play with an inside zone. Then on the next play, he is obviously watching the wheel route as it's the only play that I've scored with all game. So I take the sack. I get knocked back before running it again and get a little bit closer for a critical third and goal. Since I know he's watching the wheel route with his user and he is in man coverage, I know he's going to leave the middle of the field wide open. So I make a slant adjustment that he hasn't seen yet. Psych! And DK Metcalf is wide open for a touchdown as we take the lead. At the start of the fourth quarter, down a score, he literally goes right back to Adams in triple coverage. And I realize I haven't seen Tariq Woolen in all game. I mean, literally haven't seen him on the field at any point in this game, not once. Let me know in the comment section if you have, because I haven't. Join me. Perhaps you may be able to help solve the mystery. I use her Adams this time, and he hits Hunter Renfro with a slant, who is being covered by another guy not named Woolen. At this point, I say, if I can't have Woolen where I want him in coverage, I might as well use his speed on a blitz. So I put him in the slot cornerback spot and switch over to another play that I put out last week, the silver pin shoot. Only when I come to the line of scrimmage, once again, I see the same dude named Bryant in the slot once again. Does Tyreek Woolen even exist, or is a six foot four cornerback with 98 speed just a myth? I mean, he's starting to feel like Bigfoot or something. Like he literally glitched out of the game. Seriously, if anyone has any information about the whereabouts of Tariq Woolen, please comment. His family is very worried about him and just want to know that he's safe. On the next play, I use your Adams once again, and this was the key to shutting down his offense as he tries to hit Renfro once again, gotcha, bitch. only to throw his third interception, ending the drive, and effectively ending the game as I never let him get the ball back. So that's it. That's the vid. If you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, be a subscriber. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, I will have videos popping up on screen about the gun stack offense that I was using in this game, as well as the silver pin shoot defense, which also comes out of this formation. So if you guys want to check that out, I'm sure it'll help out your game. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. Let's get out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Support, then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.